there's there's this pain there and this there's this disconnect and the yearning to find your way back and without i mean you don't really need to know exactly any one individual's personal struggle you know it's more about the theme the underlying theme of that struggle which is helpful and healing and, and, and shows encouragement and authenticity to to the listener so th those are like timeless um themes but especially in i guess that that album side rock thing you know you had an overarching concept that really did um kind of i don't know it 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 made it um it made it interesting, I guess, for the long run, for people to to stay engaged, if that makes sense. Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Griff Peters here, Hello. singer, songwriter. And you just had an album come out this last month. Yeah, I'm quite happy about that. It's been a, a big, long journey. And getting to completion with a solo album is a really fantastic feeling. Thanks for Thanks for mentioning that. Um, well, before we get into everything else, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a lifelong musician and artist. I live in Southern California. I like being outside. I like finding a way to create music and art and show an appreciation of nature and the, the natural world. A lot of the music that I do reflects my love of that and my relationships with people and so forth and the, the wider world whether it's rocks and trees and so forth and with this latest album called canyons and waves it actually a lot of the, the music was literally either uh, composed uh, arranged or in, in some cases recorded outdoors so it has a really earthy feel to it it's a roots rock style at a what I would say is a, a very high level of uh, quality in the presentation, especially the vinyl. I worked really hard on the vinyl release, the artwork of it, and the sonics of it. And that it could have been a single 33 RPM 12 inch vinyl, but I chose to do it a double 180 gram audiophile vinyl at 45 RPM, just because I know that that's going to be a very uh, outstanding long lasting pretty unassailably robust format that people will be able to enjoy for a very 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 long time as opposed to a lot of other ways that people consume music nowadays um i'm a, i'm a i'm a tone fanatic i've always been interested in sound whether it's the sound of an acoustical space or, or what kind of pickup has to be in the guitar for a certain sound or what microphone is going to be plugged into what. Um, my grandfather, my dad's dad was a audiophile as well. And so he would always record the gigs that he did back in the fifties and sixties and the seventies. And he would go out and play banjo or guitar and his wife, they met in orchestras in the heartland and played and she played saxophone and organ and sang and all and there was always get togethers around the family and then the real to real tape player would be in the back capturing that so i'm fortunate enough to be the steward of all those family recordings and some of those actually made it on the kenyans and waves album so there's the three-year-old griff peters speaking to 
uh, his mom and also my my grandfather, the one I was speaking about, he, he, the, those voices who have now passed on, they are on the, the record. And that means a lot to me. And there's actually a lot more um, like a treasure trove of stuff on there that I get to listen to and also share with my sons and family. So I have that in my blood, you know, the love of music and the love of sound and the engineering that allows me to get my sonic vision realized and then recorded and shared. Um, I, I, I say in the in the liner notes of the the album that the 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 art of crafting and preserving sound for the ages mm -hmm. is a, is an honor and a privilege to be able to do that and my accomplishment of of putting out this record at the at, at the level that it is i i i'm indebted to those who have gone before me very much so and it was definitely a group collaboration and i really bow and respect to the people that got me to this place uh, you know they opened up a record shop in uh, the town next to ours um, and my wife and i just happened by it one weekend we were just out riding around checking everything out went in and there was a an album that i was looking for and they just happened to have it and it got into the car and i was just checking out the whole thing and like god i i miss this going to the record store and buying oh, yeah. that vinyl man <laughs> something special about having a record in your hand yes yeah i was asked lately about what success looks like mm -hmm. to me. and there's there's internal gauge of success but there's also an external kind of validation kind of success and lately there have been a number of people that got the vinyl record mm -hmm. and they were so impressed by that package that they went out and got a record player and jumped on board and now really really enjoy it and have commented again and again of, of how much they missed it the 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 buying it the the putting it on the cleaning of it the love of it you know and so forth you know pour a drink light a candle sit down and just immerse close your eyes you know and um the cool thing i mean there's so many cool things about vinyl the the experience mm -hmm. of it is fundamentally different i mean let's face it like if we're streaming something there's let's face it there's there's this urge to check your email during the second chorus because you've already heard it you know what i mean it's just this constant multitasking mode that we've kind of gotten ourselves into i liken that to like eating food that came out of the microwave while you're on the phone you know but putting on vinyl and really appreciating that is a completely different experience that's like you know a home cooked meal you know that's something you know when cds came out yeah uh, yeah i thought oh this is the ultimate uh -huh. and the only thing different was you didn't get those little cracks and hisses every once in a while that you get from a, a record needle yeah but the sound quality from a record to me sounds better um th there's there's times when a cd really does it for me mm -hmm. depends on how the music is prepared because i i've learned over the over time that if you have a format in mind when you're recording the songs and re sequencing the songs and so forth you can aim for that and, and really try to maximize the the best potential of say vinyl or cd i mean cds were, were originally designed for the convenience of having longer classical performances that did not need to be interrupted like they would on a vinyl record which you don't want to push past 20 to 24 minutes or whatever especially if you want it to sound really good so if you're playing a full symphony or whatever you just can't do that so people were really stoked with with cds because you could put nearly an, an hour or more on there but 
a common theme that I think we're seeing, if you look back enough, if you look at the wider picture, there's this allure of convenience that tries to it tries to beguile the consumer and get them to forget what they had already invested in so that you get a whole bunch of new business and income and so forth. And then eventually there's this disillusionment that comes from some maybe disappointing failures or maybe uh, just setbacks that were not really mentioned at the outcome of certain things like CDs. They have their they have their pitfalls. Uh, vinyl does too. Um, cassettes mm. do. Definitely downloads totally do. I've had a, I can't tell you how many people have, have said to me, send me the CD of your album. I do not want to listen to your album with any digital compression. I don't want to hear it on Amazon Music. I don't want to hear it on streaming. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I, I get that. I totally respect that. It's a different experience, you know. Mm. Um, I, I, mean, I still play CDs. Uh, I still I still record and play on cassette. I love it. I think it's fantastic. What's cool about cassette? I did an audiobook a while ago as a as a gift for my son for his birthday, and I narrated uh, a, a story on there. And what's cool about it is that you press stop, and then you come back an hour later, a day later, a month later. You press play. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I love that. You know. How many things on the computer you walk away for a month? Is it still there? A year? 10 years? Is it still there? Now we're starting to think maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. Might not be there. Convenience wants to trump everything else, okay? But vinyl is like, you know what? Here's a quality here. We spent extra time. I, I went through four test pressings of that vinyl record to get it to to be where it is now. I just stuck wow. to my guns and be like, it's not ready yet, it's not ready yet, it's not ready yet. Each time I did that, that was two months went by. So the whole idea of it being released in 2022, I just, I had to abandon that. It just wasn't ready, you know? Mm. Um, but it's a labor of love and now I'm very glad it, it exists. And um, yeah, I, I'm quite grateful that it's out and I appreciate people like you bringing awareness of it and celebrating it so that's awesome and you recorded some of that outside i mean i know bad company did that i believe led zeppelin did that yeah yeah um i am really sensitive about um my environment i'm 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 allowing myself as an artist to operate in in my power band whenever possible mm -hmm. when i have control of it and being a solo artist, I do have control of it. I'm, I'm independent. I have my own record label. It's, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I, ha I am enjoying complete control, which I haven't always had creating music, uh, collaborating or, or, or being a sideman or whatever in other people's projects. So I'm giving myself the, um, the, the nourishment of, of the sense of place of, of the record. And you'll find that um in the say if you see on the website some of the videos that are on there or the youtube channel some of the videos on it there's a very very strong sense of of place in there um some of the songs were filmed outside or recorded outside or uh, or in um really uh special uh acoustic spaces spaces that i really chose because they just have a glorious sound so back in um 2018 i think it was yeah i, I went on a road trip with my family uh, and and, and uh, with some friends we we all we both both of these families have a van like kind of like a baja van so we were caravanning through rural utah and as a happy accident we ended up staying at a place that wasn't really on the itinerary and the locals there told us of this canyon nearby that the Tibetan monks pilgrimage to every year to chant because of the acoustics. And I'm like, stop. We gotta go. So we changed our itinerary. We went there and I had my little beater travel guitar with me that it was not playing well. I had some issues with the truss rod. It was really clanky and buzzy, but it, it, it I had it, you know, it's like, if it gets beat up, no big deal. It's my travel guitar. And my buddy recorded me 
playing that guitar in this canyon with his iPhone, just, just, you know, mediocre sound, you know. And when I heard that back, it sounded so rad that I'm like, I have to come back here as soon as possible. I'm going to bring my good instruments, my good mics, and I'm just going to lean into this and I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just going to just draw on this amazing, incredible resource. So it's a narrow sandstone slot canyon with, you know, all these glorious bends and, and curves and, and shapes and the walls go up hundreds of feet. And, and um, the sound of course will change th throughout the, the, the canyon or wherever you happen to walk. So you can time um, the pre delay of the echo. So you can get like a, psh, or you can get a, psh, you know what I mean? It'll, it'll, you can really tune how you want it to sound. And of course, then the placement of the, the mics and so forth. So the, the, the title track called Canyons and Waves is a recording that was done, one take, one stereo microphone. Uh, I'm playing my, my old 1933 Dobro all-electric slide guitar. And there's a local hillbilly named Coulter Hoyt, great dude. He's, I could talk about him and his stories for hours. He was on the jaw harp, kind of doing that bow, bow, that yeah. drone. So I tuned my dobro to his jaw harp, and we just went off and recorded. And it's in the middle of the night, like midnight or, or even later. And there's the crickets in the background and we had lit a bunch of candles and a couple other locals came by and sat up on a ledge of this canyon and it was just this really aloha moment you know where it's just people out there being real and being silly and there's laughter on the take you know if you hear it um i'm playing some stuff and i'm just cracking up because it's just so it's so loose and funny um kind of hooting and hollering and 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 stuff and i think that part of the record i'm really i think maybe i'm most proud of that part of it because it's exactly the the if you could kind of the the dna of of what my music is about it's really like listen to that song um it's an instrumental though so there's no there's no lyrics or singing but there's a lot of vocalizing and like me kind of chuckling you can you can hear me just cracking up about the the silliness that we're doing um I like that, and I, I do plan to return there and places like it to record and just just show the world how that kind of music can sound. It's 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 a hundred percent honest. You know, I I told the mix engineer like, do not put any reverb on this. You know what I mean? Don't change a thing. You know, it was already mixed to two track. You know, nice stereo ribbon mic. You know, it's just killer. Um. Yeah, I I want to hear more of that. And it's funny because when people hear that and they get that, they're like, "Wow, yeah, I I want to hear more of that kind of stuff. That 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 honesty, you know, there's a mm -hmm. sense of place there and it's nothing that's like a cold calculated kind of, well, the industry is trending in this direction, so we want to use these kind of samples or, you know, it's, I, if somebody wants to do that, go ahead, go nuts, but it's just not it's not why I do it. Yeah, yeah. That's Canyon and Waves. That's the last track on the Canyon album. Canyon Waves. Yes, it's the final track on side D of the vinyl or a uh, song ten of of the the album. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it has that Delta Blues sound to it. Um, it does. I tuned the dobro to an open tuning, and I feel that there's a certain um. It, it, this word might be a little overused, but the, I, I feel that there's a certain transcendent quality when you get a guitar that is tuned or any instrument really, but, but when you get the guitar that's tuned to what's called a just tuning, where all the intervals are completely harmonious 
and they, they ring very, very harmoniously, more so than if you're using what's called an equal temperament tuning, like you might have to do on a normal tuned guitar in an ensemble context or, or piano or things like that. You, you need to be able to step into different keys and different worlds and, and you know, operate, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, uh, it, it, just just be like versatile you know mm. to be able to do different things but when you tune uh an instrument to a just or a pure tuning it resonates in a in a more pleasing deep quality that i find when you combine it with slide and with the ideal acoustics it becomes a transcendent experience and that sound can get into our psyche deeper mm -hmm. it can get into and and touch the listener at a more powerful level at least it does to me because sometimes i'll hear that that delta blues style with with that slide guitar and the and the nuances there where you can get between the frets and get between the notes the way like where you're not just hitting like a fret that is suggesting where that note should be because that the, the sweetest version of that note could be a little bit one way or the other, you know, singers aren't, aren't beholden to that. You can gliss and slide anywhere in between if you should, or if you feel like it, anything like a violin, upright bass, things like that, flutes, you know, things like that. You can nudge that note. And that's when things get really interesting. And when you get to that level where you can get, right to that micro tonal sweet spot mm -hmm. um to me it, it doesn't get much better and delta blues is such a powerful um it's it's just such a powerful genre the the the, the story behind it the backstory the, the 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 visceral quality of it it's you know it's it's really um yeah, it's it's hard to beat, really. I I grew up listening to to blues and and vinyl. You know, God bless my mom. You know, she had a ton of that music around. I I grew up listening to it, and it just seeped its way in. I I can't really escape the the pull of of blues uh, at all. I, it'll never go away, and I don't want it to. You know, the, let it let it uh, let it live on. Thank you for noticing that. Yep. There's something about nature that I really appreciate, and I don't know if everyone that's either watching this or listening to this gets the concept of, but gr being grounded, you go out, for me, when I, especially when I go down to the river, hmm. and I got, you know, I'm in my bare feet, Yes, feet going through the grass, and I'll plant it down in the water, Yeah, I, I, I just, I calm down, yes. I forget about all the garbage that's going on in the world or any problems i might be going through yep. and just pay attention to that moment and you just you feel your body relax yes you know what i mean yeah i do i do know what you mean and i i want more people to know what you mean in their own experience and then you really touched on a really key thing where you take your shoes off you've got your bare feet on the ground um i was at the beach the other day and i saw so many people with their shoes and socks on running away from the ocean waves as they went up on the beach and i, I know it's a bit judgy but i kind of want to go up to each and every one of them and say as a public service announcement i ask that you please take off your shoes and get your feet wet it'll be the best thing that you do all day you know um, kids naturally want to do it, you know, and I think that as we get older as adults, we can tend we can tend to um, lose appreciation for the healing quality that happens from that kind of close reconnection with the natural environment. Um, but some people are um, kind of maybe led astray by a misperception about nature as being somewhat dirty or dangerous, you know, whereas it's that, that, um, that dirt and that danger that is actually cleansing and healing. There's exactly. a, 
there's a dichotomy there deep in the dirtiest darkest danger of nature or perceived danger like a yin and yang thing deep in the black area there's that white circle of purity so get back to that mm -hmm. um that's saying it kind of in a philosophical metaphysical framework but kids naturally get it you know i yeah so good on you for doing that and and for all you listeners out there that maybe came here for music you know it, we're we're here to 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 heal and to be inspired and to uplift and and to motivate and make sure that you don't miss out on too much of that find you know your own way of touching the earth you know whether it's you know 5 minutes outside or bring in a a leaf and look at it spend some time you know get get away from the the constant artificiality entertainment kind of thing that we're, you know, that, that, that is being sold to us, you know, um, th there's, there's, a, there's a song that, that I wrote on the record that this, the song is called dirt. Mm -hmm. And one of the lyrics on there is um, I found religion in a sleazy bar watching a commercial for a fancy car. Pretty people sell you a home in hell. Maybe they can tell you who they really are. Won't you join our tribe? Consume, imbibe, like, and subscribe. No, thank you. <laughs> How really stupid do you think I am? Mm -hmm. well, you know, take the power back. Find your way to 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 be whole and complete and rejuvenated. I would love for each and every person that, that, that sees this message to be like, yeah, I'm going to, I deserve to be happy and empowered as much as possible. I'm going to find my way to get my full mojo and inspire and express and create, you know, and be me. And from that, everyone around goes, wow, that's a cool move. I want to do that too. And then, you know, pretty soon, Everything's being uplifted and you'll find your own way to do it. You know, your strengths, your weaknesses work with them. You know, like if you, if you were someone else and you could kind of step back and look at us, if you could somehow pop out for a minute and be like, Hey, I want that person to be super happy. I want that person to be super successful. I want that person to be super validated and just like awesome. Instead of this, oh, he or she's not worthy or judge, 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 fault, negative. No, 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 no. Okay, if you want to do that, it's totally your choice. You know what I mean? Full mm -hmm. respect if you want to do that. But after a while, you're going to get what you're going to get until you, you're like, you know what? This is not who I want to be anymore. It's not what I want to do anymore. I mean, I can say that from total experience, and I'm not going to wallow in that, and the songs don't wallow in that. It's But they did come from a place of knowing the darkness, how things had been. Mm -hmm. But rather than let that define us forever, be like, okay, thank you for that lesson, and here's what we're going to do now with all that more gusto and conviction because we know the other way is no longer who we are thank you very much let's get on with it and while we're getting on with it we're not waiting around for applause or gratitude or for everyone to get it or everyone to acknowledge it or whatever that's really important too just get on with the work that you got to do mm -hmm. get your intention in place do your work Show up for it and then step back and make sure that you replenish yourself and that you get to exactly. the river and you take your shoes off and you'll be like, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to look up through the branches and, you know, and, 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 and just watch the clouds. You deserve that. Do that, man. Just do your thing, you know, and know that you've put your work in and you've made the world a better place and you will continue to do so with even more effectiveness, having filled up your tank. Yeah, that's the thing about being grounded. You go out into nature, you got your bare feet on the ground, and not only are you getting that energy from the earth, but you're also releasing all that all the bad stuff. That's yeah. that's the yin and yang of it. That's what I talk about being grounded is recharging yourself. Yeah. Um there there's a really important symbiosis that humans have with the other um 
the other uh, members of the other kingdoms of 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 life, meaning uh, plants, fungus, bacteria, those kind of other life forms. Um, animals have a symbiosis with them. If you think about it, like how could it be otherwise, right? We're not just sitting here in some isolated test tube on on the planet. We're all connected. Mm -hmm. um, my family and I went to a, a talk just last night with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the famous astrophysicist, and he said an interesting thing that when you look at the, 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 the tree of life or whatever, it was actually in his diagram was more of like a circle emanating from the, the, the center of time, expanding outwards into greater complexity. He said that human beings are much more uh, similar to fungi than they are plants or even bacteria, viruses, protozoans, things like that, that we're, we're more uh, related to them. So we have this relationship. And when we put ourselves into closer contact with all of those things, as opposed to living in, in an inordinate amount of time of our own construction, you know, everything around us is man-made and you know what I mean? We kind of create our little insular kind of thing to stay right. in our kind of psycho spiritual comfort zone. You get outside of that and you participate in the interplay that is has been designed over you know eons literally it's a, a a nourishment that you can't quite you can't even begin to quantify or or uh replicate in in, in any other way um for instance trees plants you know what i mean they take in what we give out and 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 so on and so forth, appreciating that, being involved in that, being aware of that, looking at the miracle of, say, a, a leaf, you know, like, wow, I'm really happy that, <laughs> that this is happening. I know it might sound a little airy fairy simplistic or, or, or whatever, but there's a deep gratitude there that I think that if people could sell that to you, they would, but they can't. So, so enjoy even more because, because you know what I mean? No one's going to take that away from you and your love of music and your love of like, you know, oh, my gosh, I, I just you you can't possibly sell somebody the enjoyment of, of dangling their bare feet in the water or watching, you know, the creek flow across the, the stones. It's like, you know, hack the game, have fun on your own, find your own way and then share that with others, you know, share that stoke. I'm glad we're talking about this because I think it's really needed in the world. I agree. And you got a lot of your inspiration for this album uh, sitting on the beach, right? Yeah, I I I work a lot at um rock art at 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 low tide at the beach. Uh, uh either either sunrise or sunset. Um when when the sun rises and the sun sets, those are auspicious times for meditation and thought. Uh it it, it it, it, it's kind of like you may have heard like neil young he'll only uh record around the full moon there's a certain auspicious time where spiritually it's a it's a it's a portal for him to do his best work um for me low tide at the beach um don't get me wrong i also like working at rivers and mountains and desert and stuff but I've, since i'm so close to the beach I, I I get this really beautiful Zen background where there's the horizon with the water and the setting sun, and then the sunset also reflects off the water and the wet sand and so forth. Then I stack rocks and do these weird rock balancing things. I suppose I should mention I have a I have a um, creative alter ego called Rock Artisan, A R T I Z E N Rock Artisan, and I do my rock balancing art, my visual art. And then that that's my other way of doing creation outside of, of music, which I, I, I've, I've been a musician a lot longer than I have been, say, a, a rock artist or photographer, but I enjoy both. And, and they get me out. So the rock art especially gets me outside. That has a certain um, Zen calming quality. Uh, uh, a lot. I did a lot of it uh, last week when I was in Hawaii and I, I had a lot of people young and old come up and they don't know quite what to think about it. They, they look at it and. They know it's interesting, but they'll ask questions like, what is that? What do you call that? You know, and I part of me wants to kind of <laughs> kind of say, you don't have to call it anything, you know, right. you, 
it, it doesn't have to fit into your existing vocabulary. It, it just it just is. They, they've, they've never seen anything like it. So they kind of crave a, a, a preconceived spot to put it, you know, but I kind of enjoy creating stuff that commonly does not have a, a little niche for it in other people's minds, you know. Um, yeah, so I really do enjoy the rock art. It's ended up on the record, like it's um, it's on the uh, it's on the 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 CD. It's also on um, quite a few different places on the vinyl, you know. So yeah, thank you for asking me about the rock art, though. It's a, it's an enjoyable thing. I get a lot of uh, I, I I don't know. I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing it. I'll have to send you some pictures because last summer, uh, my friend Adam and and his girlfriend they came up to visit us and mm -hmm. uh got real quick i used to live down in the houston area and we moved up here to austin because i mean mm -hmm. there's just so much nature up here and yeah so they came up to visit and he's a photographer cool. so we're at the river and we've got these really beautiful flat rocks that um, my wife and i were stacking and he was taking pictures of them so i'm gonna have to send you some of those photos there's a really well-known earth art festival in texas the town called lano texas yeah I'm the lano. Yearly earth art festival there where some really talented artists will work with like rock or sand or um leaves um all kinds of wood you know i, I like the um the improvisational whatever you happen to find on location kind of thing like last week i worked with um the the lava rock and the coral that's there and then um driftwood uh little tiny uh coconuts baby coconuts that, that come down um and then sh seashells and then uh, I'll I'll find little flowers like beautiful plumeria flowers that you make the lays out of and stuff and mm -hmm. put that together and just create something, you know that just it's it's unique. You know I I really admire people that are improvising. So in a lot of in a lot of ways, as far as like it, it's it has a it has a um it has a jazz ethos to it. You know like here we are these are the materials we have or let's say the people that we have. Let's just make some noise here and come up with something. You know here's here's a certain thing. Like, here's the location. We chose that. That's like, that's the melody, you know? And then, okay, what's the rhythm going to be? Okay. Well, here's, here's the pieces we're going to start working with. You know, the harmony is how are we going to get it? There's a lot of parallels between that. And I, I find it a lot of fun. And then of course, you know, it's, it's ephemeral. That performance will never happen again. You know, it's like you're never going to hear a good band play a song the, the exact same way every night. You know, I don't I don't want to, you know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you get it. Um, Now, when um, when you were coming up through uh, to get into the business, um, yeah. how did you start off? I mean, where, where did things kind of blossom for you? Um, I just i i was i was surrounded by music ever since i can remember i was plinking away at the piano or the old um console organ if you think about a lot of families back in the 60s and 70s there's a little organ you know in the corner <laughs> and i didn't have formal training at the time but there's these switches and knobs and lights and it's all this really cool and i have an old picture of me like an old I don't know, just funny little photo of me as a kid, just sitting there at, at, at the organ, just, just enjoying all the sounds, you know? And then um, that turned into like singing along to family get togethers or uh, learning piano lessons and reading music, uh, um, learning trumpet in the school band and, and say, you know, junior high and, and part of high school. And then really about maybe 14, um, when I discovered my grandfather's old electric guitar, which I did not know he had, this is after he had passed. And I found it in the rafters of the old garage workshop. It was this case that was sitting up there and 
the, the, the workshop was always kind of a fascinating place to go because you'd never know what you'd find each visit when I'd go down down to uh, their home in Spring Valley, which is about 45 minutes away. My grandma was still around at the time and we'd go in the workshop where my grandpa used to, to do his mechanics and stuff. And uh, finally, I, I looked up. I, I guess maybe I had never done that before. I don't know. I, I looked up and there was this case. Hmm. So I got the ladder and pulled it down. And you might recall the um, the scene from the original Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, where they open the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. You know, did your face melt? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that 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 guitar is is such a prized uh, heirloom, really, because I I took it in and. I, I I plugged the cable into the input of the old 1970s TAC reel to reel tape machine, cranked the input, and then took headphones out from the tape player and got this just amazing square wave fuzz that was for the time, it was just like stupefying how amazing it was it's like i can't believe i'm getting away with this this is so fun and i had no idea of chords now my dad played guitar and he was like more like um nylon string just kind of play his you know four or five chords really loud and sing and and kind of thing it wasn't like a virtuosic thing at all and my grandpa played banjo but he he, he had gone a little before me like i was not quite old enough to pick up from him directly and i wasn't too interested in playing like your normal campfire chords and, and whatnot and the kumbaya kind of stuff or or whatever uh, but when i found the electric guitar with that sound plugged into the, the at the time it was the tape deck and then later whatever i could find it to experiment it was just this whole new fascinating world i just became obsessed by it and i and i went up to my grandmother francis peters and i'm like is it okay if I take this guitar home? I really like to. She's like, of course, take it, play it, practice it. I'm like, oh, I got it. So that was the beginning of, I found I found my instrument. And then I went home and I lifted the needle on whatever albums that I could and just listened, you know, what's that next note? What's the next note? What's the next note? And I guess I found over time that I had a good ear and I could pick stuff up. And I would do that for hours and hours and hours. And the, the first riff I actually taught myself was the, the opening kind of blues uh, shuffle feel that Jimmy Page did on uh, Bring It On Home, you know, the last song on Led Zeppelin II, just that, you know, E chord. And then when I could move to the A chords, you know, seamlessly, that was like, whoa, I can do that instead of stopping and, you know. It, it just it just kind of built from from there and had people come over to jam and play and got into a, a bar band and we'd play these dives you know we'd play like five to seven nights a week um you'd go in there you'd load in and then you'd play five sets of music you know starting at nine and go to 1 30 in the morning you know smoke you dives you know and then you'd tear down and go to the next gig and rehearse up new tunes when you could and stuff. And at that time, it it took us all longer to learn songs just because we weren't as quick studies as maybe you you, you become later in life after you've done it. And, and you, later on, you know, you can work smarter, you know, like, oh, I don't need to learn every single nuance. But at, at, at that time, I was like, I, it has to be perfect, how you know, and so forth. And I was overthinking things. But then you realize like, you know, you, you find your own way to do it and, and so forth. And so I had, you know, I don't even know thousands of hours um, of playing on stage, whether it's, you know, piano, trumpet, singing, um, you know, then guitar or, or, or whatever, um, or, or recording, you know, geeking around with, with audio and getting a little four track cassette or putting stuff down on a, two track cassette or reel to reel and playing with that. And um, 
oh wow we've got reverb here on this channel and then of course you overuse it and you crack up and it's just just all that experimentation in the real world uh, and then eventually I, I, I saw the the bar band scene and, and my kind of my per personal trajectory at the time was kind of unsatisfying around the late 80s and made the move out to Boston to go to music school where I did meet like a really inspiring group of people, many of whom I'm still good friends with. So I was able to to kind of leave town, experience hardcore focus of like minded creative musician types and then i did return back to california i was in la for eight or nine years but then i then i returned to san diego where i'm from you know this is like my family home here that where i'm speaking to out, outside so i'm lucky to to have a place um that my family's had for for many years so i can kind of have I, i'm this is my power place you know and when i bring people here it's a it's a bit of like a a restorative retreat uh, but when i was in la i played in a whole bunch of bands you know um whether gigs locally or doing tours or sessions and stuff um and and then when i came back to, to san diego it's kind of more like i did my own thing i was more interested in my own little well curated projects and and now it's like solo artists that's my my focus now well on those the album there was a, a few songs and if i can kind of describe um my wife and i are we just love 70s music yeah and there's a couple of songs i can say kind of reminds me of listening to our favorite 70s channel yeah and then there's some on there that's very bluesy uh-huh so but there's nothing no two songs sound alike thank you um yeah i i i agree with that i've had a number of people say that um and a lot of the instruments that are on the album many many instruments whether it's the mics the the keyboards the guitars the drums the room um all those components were used in um 70s music like the the drum kit is a 70s ludwig olive badge kit that um i told joe travers who's who's on the record and a longtime friend he's a fantastic musician and he's kind of like a he has an encyclopedic knowledge of music not just as a drummer but just as a listener but when you go into drum land you know I, I i i called upon him i said hey can you please help me find a house kit for hilltop frog studios which is where we did the record so he looked around looked around and finally he he found a, a, a used old ludwig kit for sale and he said this kit is the one you get this kit and sure enough you know it, it has that 70s sound to it mm -hmm. uh, the hammond organ we have was built in 1947 you know wow. um the um the guitars were made in the 60s actually my main dobro slide guitar was made in 1933 in my hometown here in Escondido was built here by the Dopera brothers when they had their shop here briefly. So that's like as local homegrown as you can possibly get. I mean, yeah. and it's, just, it's un, that, that instrument is unbelievable. So when you plug that into some old, like, you know, sixties, early sixties fender amps or whatever, you've got this super legit. It's kind of like it, 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 it sounded old school in the 70s, dude, you know? So when you hear it now recorded at high fidelity where you've got that nice, tasteful shimmer on top that you didn't necessarily get on the 70s recordings, mm -hmm. we, of course, we love it because of that. It's got that smooth tone, but but also the warmth of the low end with some now some modern extension, you know, so that kick drum and the, and the five string bass and stuff like that, that goes beyond the beyond but the heart of it is 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 like candlelight you know that that smoky yummy warm feel that the 70s music you know that, that we just wouldn't change a thing about it there's so much music like when you get into the 80s it's like 
what on earth were we thinking? It feels like biting a, a piece of tin foil. It's like, I'm so sorry, everyone, you know, that I made you listen to that song from the 80s. Whereas the 70s, it's like, yeah. So I, I kind of wanted to stay in that zone and and be like connected with the 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 precious kind of lineage of of roots rock and blues americana you know that kind of stuff um but you know bring it bring it into today you know i i I do believe that if the technology existed at that time to give a little more high-end shimmer and a little bit more bass extension where it was like maybe it was the the heads on the the tape machines even if it was like you know the million dollar machines they just didn't have that tech yet to get that low low end which we now have but do it judiciously you know get the best people say we need to master this where we've got the vinyl but it has the depth and the shimmer to it you know but the nice warm yummy center nothing cold about it you know vintage instruments minimal signal path good sounding room you know inspired performances you know that's that's been the mantra so thank you for saying that it sounds 70s i i i take that as a good compliment i hope so that's my favorite yeah. era man <laughs> oh i mean uh yeah I, th th there i mean i like i like 60s stuff too i, I oh, really do okay. and um, I actually I've been listening to some you know really old stuff lately, like on on reel to reel or stuff that's been archived on to, on to, to vinyl or or whatnot. Um, and it's amazing the 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 really old recordings that we have. They're so precious. They're they're so valuable. And one of the things that I intend to do soon. Um, it keeps getting pushed back though, just because life, you know, but it's really to dig into the wealth of recordings that I have myself already and just to draw on it and draw on it and draw on it. Um, the, the farther back you go, the more limitations that there were on the recording technology, which brings out a certain, um, uh, it, sometimes those limitations and those 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 boundaries bring out a certain level of of create creativity and mastery because you had to get a good take you know you had to get a good take um but then like the the, the other the other things on the record uh like one of the um one of the pianos i have is an old steinway upright made in 1876 when rutherford b hayes was president and the indian wars were still blazing you know in the plains and the heartland of america and just the 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 stories that that you know keyboard could tell you know like my my grandpa and my grandmother they'd, they'd go off and do gigs and, and they'd put my dad as a little toddler in a basket behind that piano and play into the night you know they play these orchestra gigs and my my dad would sleep behind that piano you know it's like and i have it it's on the record it's like that's so cool i'm so happy to be able to do that and share it with people and and because of people like you that show interest i, I can i can tell a little bit of that story it gives me a venue to kind of enrich the experience of of the, the music that i do and especially this record well, and not only the instruments, but even the the lyrics, you get a yeah. sentimental feel about it. So that that's the vibe that I got anyway. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 theme it does have a certain it does have a certain sentimentality of looking back on one's life and finding clarity and gratitude and presence um because I, I i am at a certain stage in life where i can look back on a significant amount of time and lessons learned and there's a legitimate like okay th this is a true authentic story of here's a, a dark place that i can speak of and here's a the way out of it you know the the album does start with a certain inner knowing uh like the, the the very very beginning lyrics 
Well, there's a little cute banter between my mom and I recorded in 1970. So that's that's the very first sounds that you hear. And then the 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 lyric is someday I'll come home. There's this knowing, you know, there's and, and you can you can, of course, interpret that many, many ways. And then the song goes off into these kind of kind of um, existential there's there's this pain there and this is there's this disconnect and the yearning to find your way back and without i mean you don't really need to know exactly any one individual's personal struggle you know it's more about the theme the underlying theme of that struggle which is helpful and healing and, and, and shows encouragement and authenticity to to the listener so th those are like timeless um themes but especially in i guess that that album side rock thing you know you had an overarching concept that really did um kind of i don't know it 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 made it um it made it interesting, I guess, for the long run, for people to to stay engaged, if that makes sense. Right. Well, one thing that I like to ask my guests is uh, what has been the biggest struggles or hurdles that you've had in your life? Um, well, I, boy, yeah, that's a There, life has come along with with me, and it does with all of us, where we kind of get hit by trauma and and pain, mm -hmm. and I used to be as as a young kid seeing the adults around me not dealing with that pain in a constructive way i was judgy towards them because they would find a way to escape from that pain but now having gone through a certain amount of that myself i've been able to write songs of compassion for those who choose to escape or self-medicate or or do um, a deflect or or deny that kind of stuff um so those th those life challenges which at the time i get the whole idea of like whoa there's just no way i'm going to get through today without some help whatever it might be um i get that now I get that. And I'm happy to say that when I really do sit down and think about it at the deepest level, but thank you for asking the question again, those challenges um, that, that really kind of like shake up your belief of of who you are who your family is like at the really really core of the core of the core those can seem insurmountable they can seem just completely overwhelming and 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 derail you but it is possible with hard work and intention and getting help too speaking to other people about it opening up to people not keeping it all inside but sharing and being vulnerable and drawing upon the power of your community whether it's uh getting together for coffee with just one other person or going to your place of worship or whatever it is whatever it looks like to you whatever feels right to you getting help you can eventually get yourself closer and closer and closer to a place where you can be grateful for everything that has happened you can be grateful and be accepting of what's going on in your life right here right now and redefine who you are from now forward 
and even the more so because you've been in a dark place before. Now, the specifics of, say, my dark place or, you know, your dark place or whatever, that's not so utterly important. Like, you know, I, I, I don't need to know every little detail about, you know, Kyle's life, you know, uh, struggles and stuff. But I'm getting the theme that, you know, you've had to deal with some really massive challenges. But you know what? Here you are. You're doing good work. You're showing up, Thank you know. You that's that's key and the fact that you've had the struggles or you continue to have you know this um this work that you do um it gives it gives your work more weight more authenticity more power instead of like oh i'm kind of some you know privileged silver spoon i've never had a bad day in my life well who wants to hear their story <laughs> you know <laughs> right that's kind of a boring movie that's a boring book you know, but it's like, hey, I've survived this. I've survived that. I, I, I have so much more compassion now for people who ha have, let's say, have been around substance abusers, people who have been around people that, that, that are like emotionally abusive or physically abusive, verbally abusive or, or you know, chemically dependent or whatever. I, I, I used to be really judgy because I was really hurt by those kind of people. But now... I, I have a lot more uh, compassion and I guess you'd have to just say full respect for people's healing journey, their healing path. You know, I, I, I still will catch myself judging and being irritated and stuff, and, but, but I, I, I can correct course sooner nowadays. Like I, okay, I'm doing it again. Okay. Uh, give myself a break. But I'm noticing it now. I'm more aware of it. So that's not like my um, my normal mode, you know, so much anymore. I, I'm in a more loving, compassionate place. And I think one of the songs on the record that speaks to that, it's it's um, it's like a it's like a religious mantra. The song is, um, but it's a blues mantra. You know, it's it's slide guitar and and rock like drums and real simple bass and, and keyboards and it's just this mantra you know choose love deep breath acceptance compassion forgiveness choose love that's the song right there it's as simple as that mm -hmm. and um, sometimes there's a power and simplicity and sometimes as musicians when we get to a certain level we kind of think that it has to be fancy <laughs> it has to be impressive there has to be a whole bunch of notes and weird chords and scary stuff, you know, to to make sure that the other musicians that we know, you know, applaud. But it has nothing to do with any of that. You know, it's about I want to reach people on a deeper level that's 100,000 percent real to me. And when it is, somebody will hopefully also get it. Oh, it surprised me. And I had a guest uh, we talked about substance abuse. Yeah. Everyone that he had interviewed all said the same thing that when they decided to, to get sober, not yeah. one of them did it for themselves. It was always someone else they did it for. Um well I I mean I guess when you get to a certain point in life, especially when you're a parent uh, you know, you have people that are depending on you. Mm -hmm. That makes your choices so much more important that you have your act together like that. It's yeah. super, super important to have your act together. Um, but when, well, okay. So the, the, the cover here, the, the cover of the Canyons and Waves album, this right here. Can you can you see that okay? Yes. Okay. So that was the day I decided to um do the record. Um I sat on the the one of the rocks there in that picture. And um and I didn't know at the time that it was going to be the album cover. Some guy just came along that I, I didn't even know and took a picture. Uh, amazing as that is, it's just some dude some aloha moment you know took a picture and and shared it with me but i decided that day that if i had a year to live what would i do 
you know, and it would be like, I want to create my solo record. Stop making excuses why I can't. I'm going to do it. I can. I have I have what I need. I'm going to do this. So I made that decision. And I also made the decision to stop uh, sabotaging myself in a number of ways. One of them was alcohol. Just stop. Stop. You know, um, and, and people are where they are in in their life with with whatever challenges it might be like some people might have problems with say you know gambling or shopping or nicotine or you know whatever whatever but for me what felt extremely right for me is just to absolutely stop doing that and um as soon as i did i i i, I stopped the, the, you know poisoning myself with that particular substance and dedicated myself towards a goal that was in alignment with my heart the music dude as soon as i did that the music just completely flooded in it just it, it, it was kind of like okay 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 thank you like chill a little bit you know um constant songs constant riffs constant lyrics constant grooves and then it was just a matter of recording it realizing it arranging it putting it down recording it to painstaking satisfaction and it would not go away until i got like a rough mix sent off and then i could then that riff would would finally like stop does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah it just would it was this happy insanity it, it, and thank goodness you know like my family they were supportive like you know my wife bless her heart you know she would she would be at dinner and it's just there'd be this riff you know and it's just taking over. But song after song after song, once I once I created my path for it, you know, I, I cleared the table of all other what I thought was important, but were really what, what they were were distractions and excuses and stuff. I cleared the table of that, reprioritized in alignment with who I was now or who I am now, and also got rid of the um the the hindrances and obstacles you know mm -hmm. that's really important yes uh, many times we choose things uh that that, that we if, if we were more aware of, of really what they're doing if, you know maybe you don't want to do that you know we're not our habits okay people we're not our habits okay we have the choice to choose we can choose our reality yep. right now Okay, that's never going to change. We can choose what we want our life to be right now. So at that moment on the album cover, seriously, that's that moment that I chose to create this album and make some other big life changes. And from that, I now have this body of work that I'm really proud of. And I think it has a solid uh, healing intent, really. That's, yeah, that's what's going on. So, you know, hopefully that will be inspiring to people. Uh, that it did come from true struggles, you know, there's a backstory to it. And there's also a message, you know, of, of um, some challenges, my, my personal challenges and things, but they, they, they've led me to some serious gratitude moments for sure. You know, what keeps me sober, the reason why I got sober in the first place was because of my kids uh -huh. and um, I got a divorce and I ended up with custody of the boys. And so I, you know, I had to be a dad. And the the thing that keeps me on that path or the words of my youngest son told me one day is, Dad, I love you. I uh -huh. just don't like you. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um well, okay, so I mean as painful as that was, do you ever look back on that moment with a kind of a, a like a hard one kind of gratitude? Like, thanks for being real with me that that begun yeah. to snap me out of it. Yeah. And, you know, I always say gratitude changes your attitude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, with um, w with any kind of uh, addiction whatever that thing is it it uh it 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 needs us to have a blind spot and it feeds that blind spot and it it, it enlarges that blind spot 
you know? Um, and it's just amazing once you get out of it, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I was that kind of person that I don't like. I, I yep. you know, um, like there were some times in my life where, you know, there, there there's certain stereotypes about people that aren't, you know, positive, you know, I could say, yeah, okay. I, I was in those shoes for a bit and I, I tried that on. I, I'm not really proud of it, you know? Um, but, I, but on the other hand, I'm not like walking around saying, you know, I've been, uh, you know, up on the mountaintop all knowing in, in perfect mode all the time. That's, that's totally not accurate to say at all. I've, I've made some, you know, mistakes with, with things, but getting rid of, um, s- sabotaging activities is really important. Otherwise, really, the best you can often do is just like stand still. Like, just if you got a leaky boat, you know, you're not really gonna go anywhere. You're just gonna right. sit there, and bail it out, and bail it out, and bail it out. You know, and it's not gonna be a very fun journey either. You know, plug the damn leaky boat. Get have some humility, get the boat out of the water, you know, drag it out, get your, get your body wet and muddy and and then fix the stuff. Take your time, miss a couple outings, you know, and have everybody know that you're missing the the, the outings because you don't have your act together, but fix your dang boat and then get back on it. And then guess what? People are going to know, you know, how to fix boats, dude. That's a (laughs) really good skill. Oh, that guy knows how to fix his boat, you know? Right. That's right. And people will listen to those people. You know, it gives your story legitimacy and power and weight. So on a real on like on a high metaphysical level, there's always balance. OK, it's not like. This just moves up. There's this balance. OK, there's going to be a requisite amount of darkness. We don't often give that much. Um, I don't know, much conversation. But, you know, the, 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 the world on a spiritual level has balance to it. And yes. we can see that with our, with our, with our hard won improved point of view, we can see that the, the pain and the darkness and whatnot. Now we can, um, we can transmute that into a positive healing experience force as we choose going forward, if that makes sense. Yes. And just as importantly, you have to learn to forgive yourself. Mm. And they, and accept the fact that some people are not going to be willing to forgive you. Well, I, I, so Acceptance is really key. I think the uh, the 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 core of this on so many levels is acceptance. Like, how many times as musicians have we like you played a wrong note? Okay, that was a wrong note. Okay, now we're on to the next one. But no, you're grinding your teeth over that note that you just played, or 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 maybe you didn't hit record at the right moment. You know, I've been in all those scenarios, and I've got, so it's not, <laughs> not just that first mistake that you made, but the unacceptance of the humanity of like, okay, I, I, I made a mistake, but that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Right. We're, we're, we're in, in this lifetime, we are approaching mastery through our own human experience to a level of expertise and mastery and what is an expert or a master except somebody who's already made those mistakes so let those mistakes occur accept them learn from them be aware show up be present then through humility acceptance you can move on okay and then you have compassion for everyone else who's falling down on the path, just like you have been, you know, you have acceptance, you have compassion. Then that leads to forgiveness. Like, you know what? Uh, I'm so sorry. I did that. I said that or whatever, Uh, like not long after I um, started this album project and and the the photo that was taken on on the, the, the album cover, 
I went through a huge like uh, I, uh like a um kind of a forgiveness binge, you know, or I I I or a apology kind of thing. I went around to a lot of people, which you might kind of hear a similar thing in, in, in multiple like uh types of healing circles, like a twelve step group or whatever. I I I reached out to people and said, hey, you know what? I I've thought about you the other day, and I just wanted to say. That, that I'm sorry that I did this or I said that or acted like that. And, and I'm, I, I'm not sure if it's a big thing for you or not, but for me, it was important going forward that, that I clear the air with, 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 with you and tell you that, that I'm sorry about that. And I'm no longer that guy. And, you know, and it's not at all about fishing for a response from them, like saying, Oh, they, they, you're hoping that they say they're sorry for their role in it. You know, mm -hmm. um, just just do your part and don't wait around for the 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 response you know what i mean if you get it like if somebody says you know what i'm sorry too i was dealing with something and da, 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 and i forgive you and then rad that's that's awesome that's like bonus on a new album and then somebody goes oh, okay cool let's listen to it i'm gonna stop what i'm doing i'm actually gonna show you the enough respect to put it on and listen to it you know how often does that happen well you know if that happens great but it's not why you do it it's not what you need in order to proceed on that path. So then you get to a point of, of, of forgiveness. So you've done acceptance, compassion, forgiveness for yourself, and then forgive others and realize that it's all learning. It's all learning. It's all growth that goes on forever. Yep. Then you get to a point of love. And from love, that's where the deep healing and newfound purpose and power radiates from and people sense it young and old rich or poor whatever you walk around with love and people are drawn to it you know you, you can breathe it in and and breathe it out and your life has new meaning and yeah i mean so the, the the song choose love is really that whole thing that i just said in the last several minutes in one in one like little vamp it's like a it's two chords it's just, it's just that message over and over and over again you know like a meditation um yeah thanks for the very good questions i appreciate that kyle oh man my pleasure now yeah. if folks out there want to get your album where would they go to uh just go to my name you know dot com griffpeters.com i have a store you can get the the cd the digital download and especially the double vinyl record yeah so the griffpeters.com um and then uh yeah so check that out and you can go to my um my website too i mean i mean uh my my uh youtube page but there's other links too to social media and stuff on on the uh on the website so start with the website and go there and and uh explore there I'll, I'll put some new stuff up there as things develop well i'm gonna put the links in the description to make it easy for folks to find you but I, yeah man i i can't thank you enough for this conversation this has been wonderful oh you're most welcome and i also want to thank all you folks out there if you are new to the channel um please hit that subscribe button i'd love for you to come back and for my regulars I thank you because you make it possible for me to do this. So until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace.